Hey, what's up? Liron here, and in this video, we're gonna learn together how to paint this beautiful cityscape. Now, you may recognize this scene because I actually demonstrated how to paint a smaller version of that. So, I think this will be a good opportunity to explore how to move from smaller sized paintings into larger sized paintings. The requirements, what has to be a little different, the things to watch out for, because I know many people are challenged by this kind of a thing. So, without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna do my best to narrate and explain everything I'm doing. First off, we skip the drawing stage. I will include a high quality picture of that stage. Uh, hopefully I have one, I believe I have. Uh, so we're gonna jump into the first wash, but the drawing process, I was just patient with it. I really took my time. That's the main thing you wanna do here when you're aiming for a bit of a larger piece and a bit of a more accurate and detailed one. Now onto the painting. What I'm planning on doing now is, because I have this large space to work with, unlike the small piece, I felt like I want to go more colorful. That on the one hand has to do with uh, the fact that it's larger, but on the other it was maybe just a temporary, uh, uh, specific perforation I had while working on this one. So it's not really necessarily has to do with the size, but size does allow more of that in some ways. So my first wash is fairly colorful and more than saturated, I would say I did preserve the purity of paints. So you can go very saturated or you can go slightly muted like I'm going here, but maintaining most of the colors purity. So you're not over mixing. Okay. And there's a big distinction there um, that can be made. You can go in all sorts of directions. With this one, I'm just preserving a lot of the natural color of paint. So you get to see a blue, you get to see yellow, you get to see red. Now, originally my plan was to go over everything, not leave any white highlights on the cars or anything like that. But then I thought it could look good to leave some on the crosswalk. So I have ended up painting around that. Um, and in particular, if you look at the, the crosswalk, the main one, uh, it's going to be very distinct, but the right one I want to kind of blend together. So I'm spilling a lot of water on it. I may spray a bit later on it. I want to blend it because it's a highlight that's at the edge of the painting and I don't want it to take too much attention. So I'm, I am leaving it, but I'm also kind of, you know, going at it very blended and suggested uh, as opposed to the main traffic light with which uh, I am going very distinct on the shapes. Now, here's one important thing for you. Many times, if you want to have a strong sense of sunlight somewhere, you have to, to darken a different area to get that sunlight, okay, or to get that sense of warmth. You want a sense of warmth somewhere, get a cooler feeling somewhere else. That contrast is what keeps the painting alive. And this means that I have a strong need to go darker on the foreground to keep the light where the road is and the cars in the strong contrast. So here I am pouring back into it more blue uh, in darker colors just to get that area darker so that the lights at the middle ground or background, or mid to background will shine brighter. Okay, and this is something I often do. You want the light somewhere, go dark somewhere else. You want warmth somewhere, go cool somewhere else. You want coolness somewhere, go warm somewhere else. Okay, make sense? Um, now, I did want some interest within those uh, shapes in the foreground, so I am pouring in uh, pure blue, pure red. I'm really going back to my uh, strong, colorful roots, which is something I've, I've been attracted to naturally. Uh, ever since I started painting with watercolor, I love that sense of saturation. I love to be able to, uh, to express it. Uh, what I would want to work on is how I ex express it and the quality with which I'm able to express it, uh, the nuances. That's what I would like to improve in the future, but I am very happy to go very saturated. Now, what I'm actually doing in just a moment, you'll see me do, is flipping, um, I don't know if the video shows it, but I'm gonna put the painting to dry upside down and then rotate it to have the paint move in all sorts of directions. And that is because I don't wanna get too many backgrounds. You see, I'm already starting to get some backgrounds on the right section because we have a wet blue section that pours into the dry yellow section. So what I'll have to do is let it run one direction, then let it run another direction. Also, while it's still wet, you can see me lift. Now on the, the road, you see there are some stripes, you know, showing the lanes. Uh, white stripes. Now, the reason I didn't paint around them was that it was going to be a disaster for the most part uh, if I try to paint around every small shape I see. 
I could paint a, around a simplified version of them, leaving just a line, but I felt like I didn't think of it at the time, to be honest. Um, so now that I want to bring that back, I'm just lifting. Lifting using a brush, I'm lifting using some paper, just tissue. Uh, all of these means can help. My goal isn't necessarily to get it a, to be a very accurate line. I just want to have the line there. Okay, now all of these things are things that I am able to do because it's a bit of a larger piece, which is why I always recommend people to, if you're struggling with details and so on, try also painting larger. I know I always say small paper, large brush, but once you get to a point where it's hard to get in the details or you feel like you're struggling with that, go larger. It gives you some more uh, room to work. It gives the work more room to breathe. So try both. Um, so yeah, now on to the second wash, obviously. My plan here is this. I'm gonna take care of all of the top two thirds of the painting, all the way down to the cars. That's my stop line, quote unquote. And if you've taken my frustration free watercolor course, you know, and I also talked about it on YouTube. A stop line allows you to just stop the wash and know you can rest. And this is really important when keeping the wash wet and all of that is really important, okay? Now, unlike the first wash where I said, I don't wanna paint around each and every highlight because that's gonna be a nightmare. Here, I'm already able to do that because it's a smaller areas that I'm filling. So here, my plan is to go over again, the top two thirds of the painting and paint around anything that's a highlight. So you see these white shapes of windows and blinds and, and the sunlight and the, um, the fences around the balconies, all of these areas, I do want to leave some highlights. Now, the good part here is that, yes, there are quite a lot of highlights, but I'm not obligated to go uh, over, over them or after them super duper accurately. I can make some changes as long as the main shape of the top two third is there, the buildings, the trees, and all of that. And I also get the benefit of well, I'm working on it in one go, which gives me the benefit of evenness. Many times you paint and every small element in the painting looks fragmented. You do a landscape and the trees look like they've been glued over it. Uh, every bush is painted individually. It just doesn't look as good when you can get that individual, um, that unified feeling then things can get really nice. And this is what I'm aiming for here. So painting around the highlights, varying the colors and their temperature. Um, and you see, I'm working quite freely. I'm using uh, French ultramarine and phthalo blue, and I'm using quinacridone rose, and later I'm gonna use a bit of pyrrole scarlet. So I'm not that much uh, with the limited palette here, like three colors, it's more like six split primary palette. Uh, I'm just focusing on temperature. So as I push the painting back, I go a little cooler. I go a little more green, but I also neutralize this green with red. So a little cooler, a little grayer, things in the distance are less saturated, less detailed, and I am really uh, striving to keep that uh, loose feeling uh, in the background, a little bit of um, a la prima in one go, but still blended together. Uh, because later on, in the next washes, I can go back to the foreground and bring out some of the uh, more important details to make a separation and distinction in the foreground itself. Now, the technique behind painting like this, you know, figuring out where the shapes of light and shadow are, and this, I wouldn't pretend that it's easy, but you do get a better handle on it with time. It's one of those things you kind of have to do in order to learn how to do, uh, like most skills. Uh, and even I'm not doing it perfectly. I have a lot of unevenness in all of these shapes of the trees and the buildings. As you can see, I missed some edges. Uh, some people will claim it's better to just work top to bottom uh, and no matter what. I find that way of working to be a little robotic. Uh, and if I need green on the right consistently and red on the left, then I don't see any use of working, uh, you know, top to bottom. I want to work left to right or right to left or bottom to top sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's one of those, those things you have to take a leap of faith, try and paint like that. And when I say that, let me make it clearer again. And even wash over a large area with varying the uh, colors, keeping it even and flowing and varying the colors and temperature and avoiding the highlights. This skill, it takes time. You you have to kind of go for it a couple of times with the aim and, and deliberateness, if that's even a word, uh, of doing it, okay? Uh, and then once you try it out a few times, you'll slowly get the hang of it, you'll get frustrated, it will be hard at first, that's fine. That's part of the learning curve. Now, 
I want to direct your attention to something really pretty, I think. At this stage, I'm moving all the way to the right. I kind of finished with the left section. I may revisit it, uh, revisit it again um, soon, but look at the right section. I believe I did a really good job there, especially with connecting this shape to the car on the left. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm starting to blue it a bit. Remember, farther you see less red, less yellow. This is why when you look at the horizon, when you look at a far off um, view, you get a lot of blue in it. It's a bit more muted blue, uh, which is why I'm gonna switch to French ultramarine soon, but so and not the phthalo blue, um, but it is there nonetheless. And look at how I decide, and, and I knew I'm gonna do this, to merge this side shadow, you'll see in just a moment with the car. Um, sometimes you have to pay close attention to the balance of the painting overall. This is something that is fairly hard to do when you get started. It's one of those things that takes time to learn, but it's just as I said, if you want a sense of light in the center, go darker on the bottom. Just an example. If you want it to be warm, go cooler somewhere else. These things, it's so easy to get swept into the, I'm working on this particular wash and I'm trying to get the shape right and I'm trying to get the color right, that I forget about the overall composition. It comes with time, but just have that in your awareness that when you're doing this, a lot of sh shapes on the left that are broken off and are separate and independent, you have to merge it with something that's a little more connected on the right. So look at my right side. It's the, the trees and the foliage goes all the way to the distance and then it meets the car and it completely connects with the car. Just what I'm doing right now. I completely connected with the car. Why? Because on the left, I'm gonna have a couple of very individual cars that I wanna simplify things for the viewer. Could I have simplified it in other ways? For sure. Could I have simplified, I could have simplified the left section that's in the foreground and made the, the right section more distinct. You could choose exactly where you want to place the focus and you have plenty of means of doing that using shapes, using values, using colors. You have all the freedom in the world. Just experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. I could do this very same painting and merge the cars that on the left that are closest to us, the two cars that are closest to us on the road, the one I'm starting to work on right now, for example, and merge them with the road and the left and make them very blended and have the focal point be a car on the right. Okay, it just happened to be that I chose to have the cars that are closest to us the most distinct, the most clear, the most separate and individual. And it's a very common decision, you know, to, to focus on the things that are actually closer to you, put your focus there. Okay, but you could go another, a different way. Now, notice what I'm doing here. It's very, very important for me, as I'm planning to have my focal point there, to have a lot of details and interest and play in the temperature. It's of utmost importance to me. So look at the, the the glass, the bank glass or pane, what do you whatever you want to call it. It's blue. Then look at the taillights. They're pure red. Look at the license plate. It's yellow. Look at now again the the sh core shadow of the car. It's blue. I'm varying the temperature. I'm using colors that are very distinct. You can see the yellow, you can see the red. I like the car on the rightmost, which is blended. Look at the red there, it's barely existent. On the left, I'm showing more of those nuances and that does a couple of things. First, it directs the viewer's attention more towards it. Second, it puts it more as a focal point. Third, it brings out actual more details in it. It gives the viewer something to look at. It creates interest, okay? Now look at the shapes. All I'm doing is going over everything that isn't the lightest highlights. You notice that there are some white, almost white highlights on the right side of the car mainly. I'm just painting around them, okay? My temperature is on point. It's not very different from its surrounding, which is a mistake I'm gonna do with the car to this car's right. You'll see in a moment. It's very interesting. Some very interesting nuances of light and shadow in this process, and I hope you will stick through all the way till the end. There's a lot to learn here. I know it's a lot of time too, so I'm really grateful for to anyone who actually sticks around till the end of the video and maybe gives it a try. Uh, I know it's a challenging thing, uh, and I am doing videos that are long. They're just long because they're meant for the most teaching value in many cases, not just entertainment. So here goes the shadow, completely connected to the tires, completely connected to um, the lower section of the car to keep some simplicity going. I know it's a car I'm showing a lot of details relatively in, 
But this detail, I felt like, let's cram it all together, and uh, not cram it all together, let's blend it all together. Look at the windows. I don't care where the window's edge is. I don't care about this frame. I don't care about any of that. Look at the shape and recreate that, okay? Now, I felt like I needed to make the back of the car, the highlight on the edge of the car more distinct, so I added some darkness to the background. But, but overall, what I'm doing is just shapes. Look at the, gl the, the glass at the back, the, the, um, the taillights, all of that. I'm just looking at shapes of color. This uh, window on the side was a little darker, so I added some blue to it. It's a bit cooler and darker. This edge here, it's a little darker than the white highlights, or almost white. I added a bit of blue to that. The only thing I did not darken is the rooftop of the car. The reason I did that was I did want it to be significantly lighter than the background. And I didn't know at this point whether or not I'm going to darken the background further. So the top of the car on the left, I have not made darker despite look at the reference photo it is a little darker than the highlight the white highlights okay so some decisions are to be taken and could i have done it yes and will it ruin the painting probably not so you have a lot of options there isn't just one right way of doing this this is my way there's a lot to improve now i want to direct your attention to the car i'm working on right now and you will see something interesting going on here I wanted to go a little more, a little cooler with it. But what I end up doing is going a little too blue. Now, what this does, to me personally, it makes the car stick out a little too much. And you'll see this soon. But look at the shapes. I'm just rendering shape-wise. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. You see all of these little nuances of light and shadow painting around. I'm painting around the license plate and the taillights because I do want to add red and yellow to them. Uh, but that's a different thing. That's a different story. I, I am really working around the shapes I see. So there goes the license plate and here go the taillights. <laughs> okay. Uh, but look at what I'm leaving white here. I'm leaving white some areas on the rooftop, some areas above the tire. There is this place where the metal, the, the uh, what do you call it, the chassis or the body of the car curves around the tire. So look at how it curves around, leaving a highlight right under the taillight. I'm leaving that white. Now look at this blue. To me, that's too blue. And it kind of breaks off our sense um, of temperature of the painting. Because look at the car on the left. It's a little more neutralized in that sense, a little warmer, fits the environment better, uh, its environment better. This car is fairly blue. <laughs> you can say it's really blue. That's something I might have changed had I done it again. But again, some people have seen this and said they love it. So, you know, that's up for debate. Personal taste. Uh, you can go really wacky with the temperature and then it will make more sense. You can go really warm here, really cool there. And it will make it make more sense. But, you know, as I'm more of a value painter, the color doesn't bug me as much. So, generally speaking, I'm fairly pleased with being able to get the values right and get the realistic sense, especially on the car on the left. I think that's one of the biggest successes I've had here. Now, here's something that I had to learn how to do. Um, if you're feeling exhausted at some stage, especially in these stages, take a break from the painting. Take a break from it, um, you know, drink a cup of coffee or tea, do something else, and then revisit it, unless you're on a really tight deadline. Because what happens is, sometimes with more detailed pieces, larger pieces, you really need to preserve your concentration and focus. And if you feel that um, dwindling, go do something else because you will need it for the next cars or the next areas. So you're no longer in the first wash where you have to work fast and make sure it all works out. You're no longer there. You're at a different stage now where you can take those breaks. Okay, so trust me on this one. If you need a break and you can afford the time and you see me lifting, you see me <laughs> putting back, I have to be concentrated to do these things. It was too dark, so I lifted back some of the color. Um, I may spill back into it some more color to get some details out. You see, all of these careful actions of rendering, slowly and patiently, they require focus. And if you feel like you have to take a break, take a break. Now, on to um, the car a little at the back. Now, the beautiful part about this painting is that with every detail you add, it brings out the area around it. So I know at first the painting doesn't look like much, but look how it's slowly taking its shape. And as I always say, you have to have trust in it. It doesn't look like what you want right now. Fine, keep going because it's still in its infancy. You're still working on it. Of course, it's not going to look like the thing you plan for it to look. It's our responsibility to bring it there. So have some faith in yourself. Have some belief in yourself that it will connect. 
slowly but surely is an area missing some details go ahead and add them look at the gap between the two cars that are closest to us it should be darker to bring out the shapes of the cars i'll darken it later it's fine if i and i don't even remember honestly if i darkened it but i can darken it later nothing happened nothing's wrong here and i took so much care actually in um in setting up the previous stages to be very even like, look at the trees and the, everything is, well, it's not as even as it could have been, but I did try to blend it all together, that it's okay if I go a little more fragmented in the next stages. In fact, it will be a requirement sometimes. Look at these cars. I'm painting them individually. So they are fragmented in their essence. By the way, you can see some of my hair here. It means I'm really focusing and really concentrating. Uh, so yeah, now the car in the middle and... To some of these cars, I will add some of the bright red later on, once it dries. Um, I got away with it really nicely on the car on the left, but uh, some of these it's just hard and the, the red blended together. So you will see me making this correction later on. Now, I want you to notice something interesting here. I will direct your attention to it. I did my thing, painted around the taillights and the license plate, but the license plate in this example, I will not paint with yellow. Why? Because I forgot. I simply forgot. I forgot about the license plate. But then when I finished the painting, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I forgot the license plate. But I loved how it looked. I loved that there was a highlight there. So I left it as it is. I can now, I can right now take some yellow paint and add it there, but I don't want to. It turned out perfect. So that's one of those, you know, happy accidents. Sometimes it's not necessarily something you do, but rather something you forget doing, okay? Um, and by the way, I don't say this much, but with these processes, if there's something I skipped over or didn't dive deeper enough on, let me know. Uh, tell me about it because I'd be happy to uh, dive deeper in some aspects of the painting process. I tend to just talk about, you know, the things that are on my mind and, and main things I've noticed. But if I did something and you're like, why did I do that? Ask me, let me know in the comments down below, okay? I'm doing my best to read everything and address it uh, in future videos or in the comments themselves, okay? So thank you so much for that. Now look at this car that I just almost finished painting. The, the back glass is so large and it's a large shape that's fairly light so I'm keeping it very light and it's like unlike the other cars this okay most cars the 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 back glass looks like it takes up about a third of the length of the car in this car it almost looks like it takes a half like the top half and that's because it is look at the, the reference photo all the answers to your questions are there it's very much a bottom and a top half same for this car by the way the tiny one the farthest one uh, some cars just, the, the, whether it's the angle of the glass or something like that, the glass itself reflects the light and then, or the shape of it, by the way. Uh, notice all the cars in the back, uh, their shape is pr pretty much like a Jeep or like a small, you know, car that has, the back side is more, um, it's more, uh, what do you say, vertical than it is diagonal. Um, the rest of the cars, uh, it's more of a 45 degree angle and it reflects the light better and you get a lighter rooftop uh, or backside rather, sorry. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm adding these, you know, the light reflectors that are supposed to show you when you're driving in the dark that there is a crosswalk there. Uh, these are really, um, I think, um, interesting to put in there. It kind of anchors the road in a way, it makes it more feel more uh, solid. Okay, that's the word I was looking for. All of these... Uh, darker brush marks or dry brush marks, they make things look a little more solid. I hope that makes sense. Now, everything is dried. Uh, I didn't cut the video, you know, it's a funny, it just jumps to the next stage, but everything is dry. And I'm going back over some things and adding some things that I forgot. So the car on the left, for example, is fairly dark, so I'm going over that. The Jeep next to it, there's a lot of Jeeps and large cars in this, in this painting, I suppose. Um, it's pretty dark, so I'm darkening it. Uh, you could argue that maybe I should not darken it because it's at the very edge of the painting. You don't want it to take too much uh, attention. That's a decision you, for you to make, whatever you feel like. I felt like it will pull the viewer's eye more towards the cars that are in the center, um, especially the one next to it, the one I'm perfectly happy with how the color harmony turned out. Um, but you could do things differently. You know, you're free to change things up there. Again, I have to stress this. There isn't just one right way of doing things, okay? So really have that in mind. Now, notice how dark of a wash I'm mixing. I want to start bringing out the tree trunk on their left and the branches and the tree. Um, all of these details that I got in one go first, now I want to, again, make them more solid, anchor them more to the scene, make them more distinct, make that 
uh, contrast in what Alvaro Castaneda calls this contradiction. Again, warm and cool, uh, light and dark, and in this instance, loose and flowy versus sharp and dry brushy, okay? So this tree and the tree um, next to it that I kind of made up, you'll see, um, they play an immensely important role in bringing out the sharpness and solidness of the solidity, I guess, of the foreground. And it just brings our attention more towards it. So here I am making up a tree trunk that wasn't really there uh, because I think it looks good, honestly. Now, these trees will play another role and that is to contrast with the dark roof of the car. So you see how I'm stopping them right next to the rooftop and that brings it out even more. So all of these elements play in together, um, which is why I could use the rooftops of the cars as the stop line, as the breaking point of that wash. Um, it turns from light, from dark to light rather, and it gives us a very good point to stop. Now you see me doing all sorts, you don't see me doing all sorts of things off camera. What I'm sometimes doing is, I think I took a closer look at the reference on my computer, but also I'm um, cleaning some of the brush to get the dry brush effect to work properly. This is a technique that's harder than you would think to create. Sometimes I actually have a video on dry brush. I will hope I hope to do another one soon. You saw me spraying some water on it to pull, pull, push it. It was too sharp for uh, this close to the edge of the painting. So I spread it out again. I could have done this differently, but I decided to do it this way. But in any case, what I was saying is uh, this dry brush technique isn't easy sometimes. It's sometimes hard to get the right consistency to get the, pap the paper's texture to show. Uh, and to not have it be too wet. Um, that's something you get with practice. Um, just take a piece of paper, work on all those colors that are dry on your palette and try and get the right uh, ratio of water to paint. Okay, that's the biggest um, challenge in watercolor. Get the, the, you know, the notion of water to paint ratio to, to work well and to be accurate. Okay. Um, now, another thing I will say is it's easier to do with paint squeezed straight out of the tube. Okay, this paint that I'm using here, a lot of it was squeezed straight out of the tube. It's a bit easier to get that, notice that split on my brush, by the way, leaving a white in the middle. But in any case, it's easier to do when the paint is pulled out from the tube uh, and it's still soft, I will admit, which is why I first recommend using uh, tube paint. I find they re-wet easier in most cases. Some paints are different. Um, and also, if you can squeeze out fresh paint every time, of course, that's ideal. If you paint a lot, you may finish <laughs> the paint in one painting, and then you can squeeze out some more fresh paint. I, I think it works better. Uh, you don't always have that option. Sometimes you're on the go, you don't have the uh, you know tubes with you or whatever. That's fine. But to get the dry brush effect, if you fail, try wor working with uh, paint fresh out of the tube. That can sometimes really help. Just saying. Now, look at the car in the dead center of the painting. It's very blue. As I mentioned before, I went a little too blue with this one. And to me, it's a little, it bothers me a bit. But again, I'm more of a value painter here, so uh, I don't care about it this much. Now, this stage, funny enough, generally on a macro level, I don't have too much to say about because it's like drawing. You're just drawing with the brushes. I'm adding all sorts of lines, all sorts of small details. Um, it's, it's the easiest one if you have experience with drawing. Um, but it can be harder if you don't know what to add. So to me, I'm always trying to err on the side of caution. So I ask myself, does the painting look really good as it is? If the answer is yes to that, I'll stop. If I say, okay, there is one thing or two things that I can add. For example, the detail with the cars, as I'm doing right now, or anything else, I'll add it. But once I know that the painting could stand on its own as is, I stop. And to me, it was never really a problem of wanting to add more and more details. I know a lot of people experience this. I know it's an issue for so many people to want to add more and more and more, and never be pleased with it. I have the other issue of like, I'm good with it and it could be very minimal. And some people need more detail than, than I do. And that's perfectly understandable. So they may feel like my paintings are a little emptier, but it's, I think, an interesting observation that I never had that issue. I'm kind of on the other side here. Um, of having it too easy to stop early when I could have added some more things. Uh, I don't know why I'm like that, but you know, I, the, the, the other side of the coin with that is that uh, I get, um, I think 
it's easier for me to be pleased with my works, okay? I can overwork some paintings, but that's different from adding too many details. I sometimes overwork them in the early washes. Uh, but yeah, now the one thing I do feel like this could benefit from is some lines to pull us even more into the painting. So I'm adding those lines. You see some lines on the sidewalk, and I'm also gonna do the same for the road um, in just a moment. Just to, sh to pull, pull us into, if you look at the bottom, let's say quarter of the painting or maybe fifth, it's empty. It's really empty. And um, I felt like a, a good lead in could work. So here you see me adding these lines. Um, they all adhere to perspective. Well, I try, this one's a little off. Uh, but this is one of those things, again, you get with experience. It's not always easy to follow the perspective when you get started. Um, don't feel bad about it. It's part of it. It takes time to get this uh, concept working for you. It's a fanning. It's sort of like the lines fan out, but it's not always easy to convey. Um, and now I'm doing the same for the buildings. Again, trying to um, not go too detailed there. I do like the balance. I do feel like most of the details around the cars is what I wanted. Um, and so as what I have in mind is, again, uh, I'm careful not to go overboard here. Um, this window of the car, that's very interesting. Look at it, it's, it's almost green reflective green and I love that look so I'm just trying to bring out more of it and by the way I did off camera make the tree trunks a little clearer with their shape especially their bottom parts um, their bottom areas I did make them a little clearer so I did a couple of things off camera I will actually show you now I'm gonna finish signing it and I'll show you the finished result up close so let me show you uh, with my phone camera which is a little more high quality so this it feels more saturated I bet you think that because it is you know the the my camera and any camera for that matter won't be able to convey the details perfectly so here you get a bit of a better look at what it actually looks like okay it's a little more strong a little more saturated uh, and I hope you enjoy seeing it in this kind of light and just the, up close okay uh, but with that we're gonna wrap it up thank you so much so I hope you enjoyed this lesson once again. Uh, I am really grateful for you watching. Now, a couple of important things. Uh, there were a couple of changes required by the technique of working larger, obviously. But in addition to that, you will notice how I also made different decisions that have nothing to do with that, but rather with me and whatever I want. So in this instance, I did want to go a little more colorful and saturated, and I did allow that for myself, whereas here I worked a little muter. Here, when you have more space, it was actually really fun to do these, you know, variations of warms and cools and all sorts of cool changes uh, cool in the sense of really awesome changes uh, to the scene itself. I think there's a good balance achieved here. Uh, I like the balance between the right and left sides. The trees may look a little overworked, but not really if you really look at them carefully. This whole area is kind of sent to the back. Uh, I love the slight darkness yet warmth here, which makes this light look a little stronger. And overall, I really love this painting and I was craving to do something more detailed, more, um, um, more slow and relaxed and deliberate. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And if you have, I would really appreciate if you drop a like and maybe a comment down below. These things really help this video reach more people. And if you can share it with someone you know will find it helpful i would greatly appreciate it thank you so much for watching the video and i will see you again in the next one real soon